All right, in number one, it asks us to explain how we know that these two triangles are similar. And remember when they give you a similarity statement and even a picture, but the order matters on what sides you're putting together. So you need to make sure that you check similar um, or corresponding sides. So I like to look in the statement here. So A, B are the first two letters. So I'm just going to highlight that. And then D, E are the first two letters in this statement. So this is one strategy you could use. Um, and then B, C is the next two letters, E, F. And you could put together your sides like this, let you make sure that you compare the correct sides. <clears throat> now, when they give you all of the numbers, you can also just compare shortest to shortest, longest to longest. Um, so you could just kind of look at this first triangle here and just write the numbers in order from smallest to largest. So four is the smallest, five is the middle, eight is the biggest. And then do the same thing, but below um, for the second tri triangle. So six is the smallest, 7.5 is in the middle, and 12 is at the end. And when we're comparing these, we're dividing um, to see if they've got the same proportions so that they would be similar, helping us get the scale factor. So 4 divided by 6 is 0. 0.6 repeating, 5 divided by 7.5 is 0. 0.6 repeating, and 8 divided by 12 is 0. 0.6 repeating. So these are similar, and they're similar by side, side, side similarity theorem. Um, and then part B asks us what we know about angle D. So once we know that these two triangles are similar, then we know that their corresponding angles are congruent. So if we look at angle D here, we know that angle D is going to be equal to angle A. So we know angle D is going to be congruent to or equal in measure to angle A. Number two, find the length of EF. So again, um, we can look to kind of highlight these sides accordingly so that we make sure we match up the right stuff. So here's EF. And then we can go ahead and look in this next triangle to try to figure out which side EF would be. Now, one thing I'm seeing is this angle 60. And so D and A definitely need to go together. So let's look at the sides that are on either side of D. So we've got a 15 and a 20.5, or a 25.4. So this 15 is smaller, so that's going to go with the smaller side touching the 60. So that side is going with this 7.5. And then the 25.4 is the larger of the two sides with the 60 degree angle. So that's going with the 12.7, which is bigger than the 7.5. So then that helps us to see that this 11.1 goes with this um, EF that we're looking for. So now there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can look for the scale factor. Um, so if you notice for this little triangle, this 7.5 to get to 15, 7.5 times 2 gives us 15. So this scale factor is 2. So we multiply this triangle by two to get to this one, or it's two times as big. So then you could do that to this 11.1 to get to this side. You could just multiply it by two. So 11.1 times two gives us 22.2. Another way you can do this um, is to set up some proportions and compare similar sides. So then um, when I do this, I like to start with the side that I'm looking for. So I'm going to say X compared to 11.1, since those are corresponding sides, should be equal to, and then you can pick either um, set of corresponding sides here. Just make sure since I started with the X that I start in this larger triangle. So then I'm going to compare 15 to 7.5, and then you're able to cross multiply here. So then you would take and um, multiply the 11.1 times the 15. And so 11.1 times 15 is 166.5. And then divide by that 7.5.
and then you'll end up again with x equals 22.2. So if it wasn't quite as nice of a scale factor, that might be a good strategy. Um, then it asks for the measure of angle E. So angle E is here between the green and the blue side. So that's going to match the one between the green and the blue side here. So 36 degrees. And then um, angle F um, is here between the um, orange and blue side. So between the orange and blue side here is this 84 degrees. Number three, um, decide whether the triangles are similar and then explain your reasoning. So let's take a look. We know we've got vertical angles here. So this gives us one angle being congruent. And then we do see that we've got sides on either side of the angle that's given. So this is um, potentially going to be a side angle side. So this is the larger angle or the larger side. So that's going to go with the larger side here. So the 12 versus the four. And then here we've got the two on this side going with the four. So now we just need to make sure that they're proportional and that it's going in the same order. So when I look at this, um, this side right here was EC. Oops, let me get the right color here. So for the blue side, let's just make sure they're in, they're putting the same sides together. So EC should go with BC, and that's what we see. Okay, so I highlighted EC blue and BC blue, and then the orange um, is AC and DC, so AC and DC. Uh, so now you just need to check that those are in proportion to each other. So now we just need to compare those. So when we compare... Um, the blue sides, we've got 6 compared to 12. And I started in this smaller triangle. So I'm going to start in the smaller triangle again with the 2. And that compares to 4. And these both reduce to 1 half. So they are, in fact, equal to each other. So then this means that the triangles are um, similar by side, um, by side angle side. Whoops. <clears throat> side angle, side um, similarity. Number four, what is the length of DF? So we're looking for this side here, and it connects the 68 degree angle and the 44 degree angle. So if we look into this other triangle, that means it's going to go with this 12. So then let's find another set of corresponding sides to help us with the scale factor. So we see that we have this 27 in here, which is connected to the 68 degree angle. So connected to the 68 degree angle here is this nine. And then that's a pretty easy scale factor since when we look at nine to get to 27, that's just multiplied by three. So that's gonna happen here as well. Um, when we go to find this missing orange segment, we're going to take this 12 and just multiply it by the same scale factor or dilation. So we're going to do 12 times 3, which will give us 36. You can, again, also set up a proportion here. So if we wanted to call this X, we could compare our orange sides, X over 12, and then compare our blue sides, 27 over 9, and you could um, cross-multiply and divide here again, and you'd come up with 36 as well. All right, number five says in triangle ABC, we know that angle A is 75, B is 20, and we want to select the triangle. Okay, so select the one triangle that is similar to ABC. Um, so I'm just going to write this out in uh, kind of vertically here. So we know that angle A is 75. We know that B is 20. And when we're looking at angles, we know we only need two angles similar in order to use angle-angle similarity. But we um, do have to have them in the correct order, okay? So they are going to have to match up. And so let's look at angle C. So if we subtract 75 and 20 from 180, we get 85 for angle C. Now, in 
when I look here, I see that all of these put DEF in the same order. So DEF. So now these are going to have to match up. So A is going to have to match with D, B is going to have to match with E, and or C is going to have to match with F. So we're going to have to see them in that same order. So let's take a look here. We said D is 75 and we said E is 20. So A matches D, B matches E. That's two angles. So A is similar. <clears throat> now, it always stresses me out when the first one is correct. So I like to check the others just to make sure that I didn't miss something. So I'm going to check these next ones here. So this one says that D is 20. And then I can immediately see that that is wrong because D needs to match with 75. So that's wrong. The next one says that D is 85, okay, which doesn't match 75. So again, those can't be similar. Um, and then the third or the, the last one says that D is 20. And so that doesn't match the 75. So those can't be similar. Now, if these letters orders had changed accordingly, then these could be because they do share the angles. So all of these are these angles. We just have to make sure that the letters are in the correct order as well in order for them to be similar. All right, number six says sketch a pair of rectangles that must be similar. Now, when we're doing rectangles, remember that rectangles have to have four 90 degree angles. And then similarity would mean that our sides need to be proportional. So you can literally make up anything you want here. Um, just make sure that this, just make sure that you've got um, your angles marked as right angles. Okay, in both. And then when you draw your second one, <clears throat> just make sure that your sides are proportional to your first one. So whatever you decide to label them. So if I label this um, one and three, and then I want this to be um, 10 times bigger, then I could put these as 10 and 30. Or if I wanted it to be two times bigger, I could put these as two and six. Just make sure that you have the same scale factor that brings one to the next. All right, number seven says determine if each statement must be true, could be true, or definitely can't be true and show your reasoning. Um, so this one says two line segments are similar. So if I just kind of draw out two line segments here, um, there's definitely going to be a scale factor between these because if this one is a length of like A and this one is a length of B, then the scale factor is just going to be whatever B divided by A is because there's only one length here. So this one must always be true. Okay, you'll always be able to dilate the segment to the next. And then are two angles similar? So remember that in similarity, angles stay the same size. So this one doesn't have to be true, but it could be true. So if your two angles are the same, okay, then these are similar because they have a, they can be equal to each other. But um, if your angle was a different size, there's no way, we don't dilate angles. So there's not going to be anything to take this one to this one because this is just going to get bigger like this this angle in here is going to stay the same size. Okay, the, the length of these rays will change, but the width of the angle will stay the same. So angles being similar, um, it could be true if they're equal. But otherwise, it's not going to be true. Number eight, G prime is the image of G. So let's find that in our picture here. So here's um, G and here's G prime. Um, where is the center of dilation here? So remember that the center of dilation goes through both the image and um, the original. So if we go like that, then we can see that our center of dilation is point C. 
And then we want to estimate a scale factor here. So G is here. G prime is closer to C. So we know that this is going to be less than one since the image got closer to the center. And so then you can just kind of guess how many times would this fit into this picture. So maybe three times. So then the scale factor would be something like one third.